Hey, welcome to this Dare Tailored. I'm Sarah Powell from the University of Texas at Austin. And right now we're talking about the use of multiple representations. So what do I mean when I think about a multiple representation? In mathematics, we think about three different representations of math. We think about concrete representations, we think about pictorial representations, and we think about abstract representations. Now the one thing I want you to notice about the way that we have these representations laid out is that there's a lot of overlap and there's also no hierarchy. We don't have to do one first and one last. But instead you pull in these multiple representations and use them when it's appropriate for students and when students need extra support in understanding different math concepts and procedures. So let's talk about these different representations. We're first going to talk about the concrete. The concrete means we have three-dimensional concrete manipulatives that we can touch and move to show different math concepts. So I'm going to move over to my document cam and show you a few different concrete examples. So here we have our document cam. And I can look at different concrete manipulatives such as these. Here are some clips. These clips are really nice if we need uh, practice with like counting or multiplication and division. We can arrange them and do all kinds of fun stuff with them. We can also group them to show sets of 10 with place value. And they're also really awesome for fractions. So they're a really nice manipulative to use. Speaking of fractions, another manipulative that we can use are fraction circles. So here I'm touching and moving these fraction circles to show the fraction 1 half, or I can show the fraction 2 sixths. So that's another concrete manipulative that I can touch and move to help to understand different math concepts. Here are these concrete two color counters. They're red on one side and yellow on the other side. And if I flip them just like that, I can show the fraction two fifths, a set of the counters. Two of them are red of the five counters. So that shows the fraction two fifths. These are also great for helping students understand what it means to add and subtract positive and negative integers. I like a lot of these manipulatives that are multifaceted. Um, here's another manipulative. These are things that we can touch and move uh, around. These are called algebra tiles and we have some stair tailors where we show how we can use these algebra tiles to help students um, think about solving different types of equations. And yet another manipulative might be die. You might have these in your classroom. Maybe you uh, roll two of these and multiply the numbers together. I could also do some stuff with place value by lining them up and saying like, okay, here's the, uh, the number 6,980. Lots of different things you can do with manipulatives. But the idea with all of these is that they are things that students can touch and move to help understand math concepts and procedures. Now another type of representation is the pictorial. And with the pictorial, students are looking at two-dimensional images, usually printed on paper, that represent math concepts and procedures. So here are some examples. Here's a very, very simple example. I can touch these bears to see that one, two, plus one, two, three is five. I can look at this place value example. Most of the time, like time and money will be presented in the pictorial fashion. And we also see a lot of three-dimensional images presented two-dimensionally. Here's an example of that. But we also have pictorial images that can be presented virtually. So if you have some type of tablet or computer, there are a lot of virtual manipulatives that you can download. Many of them are free or pretty low cost, and they can uh, students can touch and move those around to see different math concepts and procedures in play. And then we're doing all of this to help students understand the abstract in mathematics. And abstract means what does math look like when we're thinking about numbers and symbols and words. So for some, exa uh, some abstract examples, excuse me, might be if I'm solving a, a problem just like this. Um, another abstract example might be uh, a problem like this. Um, if I was thinking about place value, perhaps an abstract example would be this. And there are many, many other examples here. But the idea is that I have the numbers that represent mathematics, the symbols that represent mathematics, and the words, and these are the abstract forms that I need to understand to often read in mathematics and be able to respond uh, with my answers in mathematics.
So when we think about the concrete represent or, or concrete pictorial abstract, which some people do call the concrete representational abstract, we want to help students see all of these dip different representations and how they work together. So for my abstract examples here, I could use base 10 blocks, I could use my algebra tiles or algebra blocks, um, I could use some base 10 blocks here as well. If I was thinking about the abstract of this, our fraction, we've got fraction tiles and circles and geo boards and two color counters. There's all kinds of other representations that we can bring in to help students understand what these abstract representations mean. And I hope you will think about really using a lot of these multiple representations within your math instruction.